Hi everyone, it's me Darlene in the not dark. <laughs> I recorded a video out here on this channel last night in the dark and I thought I was okay because I had a little light on that I realize is still on and it was still way dark. I will uh, figure all this out at some point. I wanted to tell you a little thing that happened today that I was quite proud of. It's not like me to do what I did but I really am at the point in my life where I don't put up with anything that doesn't work for me. And I wish I would have, you know, done this stuff 30 years ago. I don't know how much I talked about, um, or I should say how much got uploaded, because I've done videos that didn't make it because of the editing, it was just too much, or I just decided I didn't want to share or it was way too dark. So, um, but at one point last week, yes, it had to be last week, there were a couple of rough days with my mother, like really, really rough where I was like, I'm gonna lose my mind if I have to be doing this. And as most of you know, my intention was never to have my mother back in my home for any length of time. She was in a nursing home, and that's where I thought she would be staying. I always said if she ever becomes a hospice patient, I will take her home. And I did that before the move because she had a very short life expectancy, so they told me. And I thought, I can do this. I can do this for her. But then with the extended life expectancy, you know, she's just, she's just hanging out. She's not ready to go anywhere anytime soon, I don't think. And the move, that was very stressful because now I was dealing with two major things. And I decided I needed to move because if she lives even uh, two months, I, I don't want to be in Maine for winter. So I decided we're moving her and that's all there is to it. And so I did that. And now I'm in this situation where I'm living in a, you know, an apartment with Derek and Skyler. It's cramped. They're not complaining, not at all. I'm not complaining. I'm very happy that I have this setup because I don't know when I'll ever see my furniture. But it's it's stressful because I'm like with my mother 24/7. At least at home, the home in Maine, I could be in another room to cut fabric, to be on my computer. But now I'm just with her her just right there and it's you know like I said the narcissism kicks in and it can be hell and I'm on edge because I need to make sure she stays quiet and doesn't yell if Derek is recording or doing whatever so last week it was uh, a Monday and a Wednesday and I reached out to hospice and said, look, we need to look at getting her placed. Now, I don't know what they have here to offer for hospice care. I know the DeSoto health care that she was going to be in as a nursing home, they have hospice in there, but they don't do business with the hospice agency that we're currently with. I'd have to switch, which I could, but I wanted to see what the hospice that I have, that we have right now, what they could offer. And so I talked to, I don't know if it was nurse, aide, whatever, I talked to anybody who would listen. And the aide said, it's, uh, you need to talk to the social worker. And I was like, that's right, the social worker. I had met her once. She seemed really nice. And she says, I will have her call you. So she called me. And all I was getting out of that conversation was, there's really nothing we can do. There's waiting lists. And... It was like she was just trying to like calm me down and I wasn't like irate. I was just explaining again the history and how this has nothing to do with end of life but yet she wanted to you know fill me in on things and I was like just you know getting agitated about how I just felt like I wasn't being taken seriously and then during that conversation she said just remember this is temporary and she lost my respect in that moment because that was the ultimate dismissive thing she could have said it's saying just hang in there it'll it'll be over at some point 
but that doesn't help the current situation and they should take anybody seriously when they're saying look I simply can't do this I didn't sign up for this I wasn't expecting this to last this long you know and uh, and that's when I had to make the decision that I was going to have to put all my work on hold and just be full-time for my mother because I can't do both and it was very clear to me that there was no help for me at least not with this agency so I told her that you know all right looks like I'm on my own here we ended up hanging up and I believe that was like on that Monday and then Wednesday it was all hell broke loose here again and I once again uh, talked to I think the aide and the social worker texted me this big long text about this long <laughs> at least on my phone and it started out on a note of like you know just you, you know with there's really nothing much we can do with COVID and this and that and so I didn't read the rest of it and then you know again I knew I'm in this all by myself and I just have to deal with it or I can you know try to change hospice but at this point um, I do like the aid that she has coming in so I hate to change and you know so I just you know I just accepted the fact that I'm not gonna have help so then uh, yesterday when a nurse came in to check on my mother she happened to tell me oh you have another appointment uh, you know Callie's coming and then the social workers coming tomorrow which is today and I said oh really and she said yes and I remember she had said she would come in like maybe in about two weeks or whatever. So I thought about it all night and I said to myself, I, I, there's absolutely no reason for me to meet with her. There just isn't. Uh, to me, the social worker, I, you know, I don't need another round of therapy of just talking to her. I've done that so much and I, I know where I stand with everything. And uh, she's not going to fill me in on life things that I don't know about. So I thought, uh, when she calls, I'm just going to tell her not to bother coming. So I was nervous about that. And she called today and said, oh, I can be over in a little while. And I said, you know what? I said, let's not even bother. I said, because of our last conversation, I realized that the only thing I could possibly need help with is something that you really can't help with. And she's like, well, what are you talking about? And I said, you know, I was wanting to look into placing my mother. And, you know, you told me that we couldn't. There would be a year wait for this, a year wait for that. And she said, oh, no, there's, there's options that we could do. She says, if you really want to, there's options. She could go in for skilled care and not long-term care. And I said, when I was talking to you, I was very serious that I wanted to look into something. I said, why didn't we get something started? If that's what you said, why didn't we get on the ball and start doing that? She's like, well, she says, I don't know. And I said, oh, yeah, that's right. I said, because you told me to remember it's only temporary. I says, and I was completely dismissed when you said that. I said, and I lost all respect for you and there's no advice you could give me or anything that you could tell me that would ever make me want to sit down and confide in you the way I confided in you. And she's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. She goes, you know, we just have to look at the positive things. And it's like, fuck that shit. I understand it's nice to think positive and but the the reality is when somebody's in a mess and they're asking for help you can't just bury that and and pretend that there's goodness on the way that's dangerous it's dangerous for everyone involved you just don't know what somebody's breaking point is and I was so insulted that she's still talking to me like you know we just have to you know and I think I mentioned this in a video because I mentioned something about, you know, look at Andrea Yates. She was in a psychiatric hospital that I actually was in, not as a patient, but my husband went there because his work wanted him to go in for treatment for alcohol. So he was going to meetings there and I would go with him at that same place that Andrea Yates was in. And a doctor told her that, uh, that she needed, you know, to just think happy thoughts. 
and you know she ended up drowning her five children so again everybody knew that that woman had issues but it, and I, I think that they really believed and knew that it was serious but yet there was nothing anybody was doing and it, you know it, it, it turned out awful so um, you know would it help to tell Andrea Yates uh, this is only temporary it doesn't matter even if it is temporary you have to worry about the moment that you're in so back to the social worker I was like, you know, this positive stuff, you know, there's a place for that, that, but it's not when somebody's in a crisis mode and asking for help. And she says, well, she goes, I believe in positivity so much that I even have a tattoo that says, this too shall pass. And I said, I absolutely hate when anybody says that. <laughs> it. She lost more points because she has that. Again, that's nice. That's nice for people who want positive thoughts. But she is a social worker for hospice care where everyone knows being a caregiver for somebody is hard even if the relationship is good. So she can't just, you know, be like this too shall pass and it's only temporary. And I told her, I said, not everything passes. You know, you can't say this too shall pass. Not when you're 61 and you've been with a narcissistic mother for 61 years. That didn't pass. Will it ever pass? It might. If she ends up dying before me, I could die first. I guess that passes, but then I won't know, you know? So it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't like that in a social worker at all. And uh, so she says, well, I can still come out and talk to you. And I said, why? You know, I told her I was so, I was like, I'm being very honest here. I've lost respect for you. You've dismissed me and there's nothing, nothing I can do with that at this point. So uh, I was really proud of myself that I was just honest. And she did say, well, I appreciate your honesty. I don't know if she really appreciates it. She is very young and I understand that. But uh, that's, those aren't things that you say to somebody um, when you're a social worker in a, a hospice environment. I, you know, I just don't think so. So see, this is what I mean is that I no longer accept things in my life. If somebody's not a good fit, I am like immediately done. That's it. I'm not, I'm not playing games anymore. And my, the social worker for my mother in Maine, I, I liked her like the whole first time. And it was like the second time that I started like thinking, hmm, I don't know about this. Her thing was that uh, she never wanted me to look ahead. You don't know, it might go good. There's no reason to like go that far. Just plan the moment and not plan ahead. And I'm like, I have to look ahead and see if this falls through, what's my other options? I said, I can't just plan something like this and not look at all the things that could happen. How could this play out? I need to be prepared for every one of those scenarios. And she just said I was overthinking. She wanted me to look stuff up on YouTube about overthinking. And I was like, uh, you know, again, you have to know. Uh, to me anyway, it doesn't make any sense to just do something without, you know, saying, okay, now if I do this kind of transportation and this happens then what's my other choice I mean you know it's just it's beyond so uh, I didn't like that about her and then and then she called me and said they had a meeting because they were trying to make a case for my mother's five-day respite at the hospice house it had to be an emergency basis and she was trying to convince the board that this was an emergency because of the big move and that my mother just would not be able to have the care in the home because the furniture was being moved and all that stuff so she called and she said they they have a question and she said uh, and you know so you need to to give me an answer for this if you were to bring your mother to the airport and the airport would say she can't fly with us and I had already talked to Southwest, and um, you can, you know, just be on your deathbed. They will take you. But she said, if they were to turn you away, what would you do? And I said, oh, I said, let's not think about that. That's, you know, 
that might not happen. She goes, oh, I know, I know. She says, but the board needs to know. I said, yeah, because we need to plan in case things don't go the way we plan them to, which is, I was trying to make my point to her that it's ridiculous to not look ahead and say this could happen and this could happen and this could happen. So, you know, it was just funny that, you know, she had to call me and, you know, if this happens, then what? And, uh, you know, at that point, I had just, you know, told her, I said, if they wouldn't take her, then I would just have her put in the hospital. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, take her back home. There would be no furniture, nothing, you know. So, <laughs> anyway, so we solved that. But it, the irony was that she just had to ask me something that she told me all the time to not do. And so, yeah, I didn't like that. So anyway, I know it probably sounds like not a big deal that I stood up for myself. It's not even that I stood up for myself. It's that I stood up for, I guess, like what I believe. And I just can recognize things. And I have recognized things for a long time. But the difference was, you know, recognize people that wouldn't be a, a good friend or a good boyfriend and felt toxic. But I always felt like that's all I could have because I was always told that nobody nobody would really like me everybody would use me I was always told anybody who's friends with you they're using you they're using you for something so uh, now I just knew I've had enough shit in my life and I don't need somebody telling me uh, this too shall pass or this is only temporary remember that you know hang on to that hang on to the fact that your mother's gonna die and you know and you'll have peace after oh it's just yeah it's just ridiculous. All right, you guys. I just thought I would share this, and it's getting dark now, so I'm going to hang up. All right, thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with more soon. Bye.